Thanks. I was just getting entertaining there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think, first of all, the, the idea of uh, you know, onshore wind farms, you know, I'm not totally opposed to that, but you have to convince local people of the benefits of that. And, and quite clearly, that's not happened in, in, in a lot of cases, that, that you know, people are very, very suspicious that, that these monstrosities in, in some places are, are going up. I live in Dundee. I'm, I think I'm the only member of the panel here that actually lives and works in Dundee. I've got no problem at all with the, with the turbines that are up at, at Michelin. I, I don't think there's many people that live in Douglas and Whitfield, the areas round about that, have, have much, much problems with that. And I do think there's a point about where is the demand for the energy? Why do they have to be built in the middle of nowhere? If, if, you know, if, if the demand is in the cities and in the central belt, why not have it, you know, much closer to, to actually where the, the demand and use is? You know, why waste okay. all that time? Can I just put that short? Can you just answer that? There's, is it because the take is greater in, in the islands than it is down in the central belt? There's absolutely no doubt there's more wind capacity up the northwest coast of Scotland. I mean, that's where the big energy um, uh, resource is. So, I mean, obviously, these wind farm developers are going to go where they can maximise their profits. And I think it does come back to this point that we need to look at community uh, energy projects Project, community wind projects and Fintry in Stirlingshire is a classic example where they've got the, the community have got behind the wind um, the wind farm in in their area and actually own one of the wind turbines and I think this is a vital part in the whole wind farm debate if we can actually engage uh, with the communities and get them to buy into the whole the whole uh, concept of what wind farms do as well as getting the financial benefit then you're winning can I just go then quickly back to the point, the lady, really important point that the lady raised uh, about the marine renewables and jobs. Because I think one of the significant facts that it was an announcement from Portugal last week, two weeks ago, and Portugal, the Portuguese government, are investing five billion pounds over the next five years in renewable energy. Now, what that means to us is, as, you, as you, one of you rightly pointed out, that first wave-powered farm is in Portugal. Scottish development, Scottish ideas, Scottish built. Now, the Portuguese want to capture those jobs as well. The next round of, um, wind, uh, of wave generators, they want built in Portugal. So we are in the position of losing the job opportunities, and there are masses of them. And when I... When, when, uh, um, Lib Dem guy, Nicol Stephen, Nicol oh, sorry. Stephen, sorry, yes I know. That wasn't but, a snub to you Alex yes. then, sorry. Oh, I see, that was a, is that a joke? No. <laughs> right, fine, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Nicol Stephen announced um, the latest award to the marine renewables. It was five millions added on to the eight millions he'd already given. Thirteen million between nine projects,